Today on Let's Talk Tactics, we're discussing Space Wolf Dreadnoughts. Anvil of War! Let's Talk Tactics! Hey guys, and welcome back to Anvil of War Gaming. Today on Let's Talk Tactics, we are discussing Space Wolf Dreadnoughts. Uh, before I get into the video, just want to do a quick reminder. Uh, if you're enjoying our content, hit the subscribe button, let us know you're enjoying it, and we'll continue to make more. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can do so by supporting our sponsors over at Red Dragon. Uh, there's a link to their web store in the video description below, and we really appreciate any and all support. Now, today we're going to be talking about Space Wolf Dreadnoughts, specifically the uh, unique weapon options and or uh, variants of Space Wolf Dreadnoughts. So we're not going to be covering off any of the generic models. Uh, we are going to touch on the Venerable Dreadnought today, the Wolfen Dreadnought, the uh, Murder Fang, and we're going to talk about Bjorn the Fell Handed himself, because uh, you can't not talk about Bjorn. Um, yeah, first off, I gotta say, I've ran uh, quite a few games with uh, um, Dreadnoughts, Space Wolf specific Dreadnoughts on the tabletop, and uh, we're gonna get into a little bit of their stats, a little bit of their equipment options, and we're gonna touch on some uh, some stratagems that I think stand out, jump off the page, or, or are specific to uh, Dreadnoughts in uh, both the Space Marine Codex and the Space Wolf Supplement. And then we're going to get into sort of my preferences and how I like to run them in lists and uh, get them up the table. So when we're getting into this, uh, first off, we're going to talk about some of their data sheets. So I'm not going to go over every single little de uh, detail, but we were going to focus more on the uh, the, the changes between the uh, data sheets. So um, when we're starting off with the Venerable Dreadnought, it's important to remember, he, you know, movement six inches, weapon skill ballistic skill of a two plus. That's huge. Um, big focus on that for me. Uh, strength six, toughness seven, eight wounds, four attacks, leadership of eight, and a three plus save. Now, um, he comes stock with the sort of typical um, Dreadnought loadout, which is the Assault Cannon and the uh, Dreadnought Close Combat Weapon, and then a Storm Bolter, which can be flipped out for a Heavy Flamer. Um, but we're not really interested in those options. We're not really interested in the typical uh, equipment options that you can give to this guy, uh, switching out, you know, his Assault Cannon for um, for maybe an... Um, sorry, Twin Laz Cannon or Multi Melter or something like that, or being able to switch out the combat weapon for a missile launcher. Why are we not really talking about that? Well, because Space Wolves melee. That's what we want to focus on. So we're really going to focus on the uh, melee options. Now, they do get the unique option of taking the Hellfrost Cannon. It's a 36 inch range weapon, uh, heavy D3, strength six, AP minus two, uh, damage one blast weapon with an alternate profile of heavy one, strength eight, AP minus four, D3 plus three damage. So it, it's a cool weapon. Um, it can do some damage. Um, it's not necessarily my uh, my go-to, I'm going to say. Um, and the reason just for that is that uh, you want these guys to be tooled out for melee, and they have some great melee options. So one of the unique melee weapons they can take is the uh, Great Wolf Claw. It's strength plus four, uh, AP minus two, damage three, and it allows you to reroll all wounds. Now, you can only take a single one of these, um, and it's sort of... It's a good option just because the reroll wounds is fantastic on something that's already buffing him to, uh, you know, he, he's he's striking at strength 10 with this thing, which is great. But um, I don't think it's the best option, and it does allow you to retain a shooting option for the, te or for the uh, Dreadnought. But I really want to drill down on the Blizzard Shield, and uh, you're going to see a, a bit of a... Uh, continuation over into when we talk about the uh, the wolf and dreadnought just in the uh, the blizzard shield and the fenrisian great axe now the fenrisian great axe is just a, a beast of a weapon it's got two different profiles so the first profile is plus four strength ap minus three d3 plus three damage um it does get a minus one to hit, but it's important to remember as Space Wolves, you're getting plus one in the first round, essentially the first round of every combat, uh, whether they're charged, uh, they charge or they heroically intervene. And uh, 
yeah, so you're you're kind of already negating that, so that's that's already a plus. And then in addition to this, you can strike at a, a secondary profile, which is strength user, so it'll be strength six. Um, it's AP minus three, and it's damage one flat. But for every attack you make with it, uh, you can make two attacks. So that includes you know the shock assault and uh, any other ways of buffing the number of attacks they get. You're all of a sudden having these attacks multiplying by two. Um, it can create some serious damage output with this. Now, the real reason to take this weapon over the claw is that it gains you the Blizzard Shield. Now, the Blizzard Shield is going to give this guy a 4 plus invulnerable save, and that's going to stack heavily with his defensive ability. Uh, being already a Toughness 7, 8 wound model, you're going to be gaining, um, I mean, you have the duty eternal rule now, which is huge. I mean, minus one to incoming damage to a minimum of one on all dreadnoughts. Oh, just awesome. He also has the unyielding ancient special rule uh, with the venerable dreadnought specifically, which is going to give him a six plus feel no pain. Um, so a six plus wound shrug against wounds, mortal wounds. Pretty strong. Um, he does have the Explode special rule. Uh, he does have the Angels of Death special rule. Um, really solid model on the tabletop. And I think you're really going to want to lean heavily towards that uh, the uh, Axe and Shield uh, combo. Just because, I mean, he's going to be so tanky. And if he gets in, he's going to be able to do a ton of damage. Now, uh, moving from him, we're got, we have to talk about the Wolf and Dreadnought. Now, the Wolf and Dreadnought has an 8-inch move base, weapon skill 3+, plus, ballistic skill 5+, plus, strength of 6, toughness 7, 8 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 7, and a 3 plus save. Um, it has the same sort of similar weapon options, to, uh, but it doesn't have any of the shooting options. This thing is focused on melee specifically. Um, and that's kind of obvious in the way that this thing's supposed to kind of run up the tabletop. Uh, it comes stock with a Fenrisian Great Axe and the Claw. So you have those two different melee options, but it's kind of weird to do that. You're, you're most likely going to be swapping out the, uh, the uh, Claw for a Shield to go with the Fenris and Great Axe. Now, when you're running this thing on the tabletop, it does have a movement of eight inches. Um, so it's obviously considerably fast, faster, but it also comes with some special rules that make it pretty, make it even faster. Um, first of all, it's got Murder Lust. So Murder Lust allows it to reroll charge rolls. This is pretty obviously a good thing for something that's melee focused and wants to get into combat. Um, it also, con again, continuing on the Duty Eternal, it's got uh, the Duty Eternal to reduce incoming damage. Um, it's got the Beastal Rage, which is a bit of, it is a negative. Um, it basically states that the unit cannot perform any action. So, I mean, this thing's really kind of, uh, it's got one focus and that's kill. Um, and again, it, it, it does retain the Explode Special Rule. Now, I have mixed feelings about this model. I, I love the concept of it. I love the feel of it in a Space Wolf army. But if I have to choose between taking one on the tabletop and taking the Venerable Dreadnought, the clear edge goes to the Venerable Dreadnought. I don't mind losing the ability to uh, reroll charges and to um, and reduce movement for the sheer amount of survivability that you're gaining. Um, just, I mean, you're also gaining that two plus weapon skill and ballistic skill on the model. I mean, the ballistic skill doesn't really come into play here, but weapon skill two plus with the minus or the plus one. I mean, even if you're swinging um, in the uh sorry the melee mode with the axe that is increasing the number of attacks you get you're now negating any negatives or that first negative if uh the enemy unit is hard to hit in combat it's in, in my mind it's a clear uh the vener venerable dreadnought is a clear winner um and yeah but i mean i i still like i said i think uh the idea of a hall uh Dreadnought uh, or a heavy Dreadnought Space Wolf list is very cool in my eyes. So, and if you're going to do that, you're definitely going to want to mix and match. Um, now, moving from them, we need to talk, we have to talk about the two uh, special character Dreadnoughts in the Space Wolf Codex. So, first of all, Murderfang. 
Murder Fang has weapon or uh, movement of eight inches as well. He that continues over. Um, basically, the stat changes are he gets a weapon skill of two plus. Um, he has five attacks base because of his weapons options kind of included in his profile. Um, and I mean, he he comes stock with the murder claws. Um, he comes stock with a storm bolter, a heavy flamer, storm bolter, and the murder claws. Um, no weapons upgrades, no changes to his uh, to his equipment options. The murder claws are times two strength, AP minus three, damage three flat, and each time you make a uh, a wound roll, you can reroll the wound roll. So. That's pretty fantastic. Um, I mean, it's it's essentially the the claw, but better. Um, times two strength is pretty is pretty potent. He's now going to be swinging at strength twelve. Um, he's a bit of a beast, and uh, he he retains that eight inch move, so he's quicker. Again, I think if you're looking at the Wolf and Dreadnought and you're not taking Murder Fang, you should probably just take Murder Fang. I don't know. Uh, the Blizzard Shield does up his survivability, but he does get the character keyword, which means he can be screened. Uh, you can protect him, which is big. Um, now, he does have some special rules that are specific to him. Murder Maker, uh, you can reroll charge rolls for the model. So that's, re again, retained from the, uh, the Wolf and Dreadnought. But he also gets um, a little bonus on there, which is uh, this model makes three attacks instead of one for Shock Assault. So he's plus three attacks. Remember, he's now base five attacks. So he goes up to eight. At strength 12, AP minus three, three flat damage. Bit of a beast. Um, if you can screen him out and you can get him up the tabletop where he needs to go, he's pretty strong. Does retain the duty eternal. Um, he gets the force of untamed destruction so that he can't uh, be the warlord uh, and he can never have a warlord trait. So, I mean, no, no loss there. He probably wasn't going to be who you were choosing anyways. But, uh, and he also gains, the, retains that beast of rage again. This guy's supposed to be killing stuff. That's his, that's his thing. Um, and he retains the explodes ability as well. So when we're looking at this guy from a stats perspective and an option as an option uh, for your list, again, I think he edges out. He may, uh, <laughs> he has a different sort of role. Um, he's still going to be heavy hitting, but uh, just, as far as it depends on if you're trying to squeeze points in and uh, and figure out uh, your list sort of synergy. But if you can screen him and get him up the table, he is fantastic. And he's still pretty fast. I mean, eight, in, eight inch move and the ability to reroll those charges. But uh, yeah, the, just that those eight attacks is, is terrifying, especially if you start to stack some stuff. Now, it's important to mention that uh, the Venerable Dreadnought has the... Uh, core keyword as well as the uh, smoke screen screen keyword and that's going to come into play when we talk about stratagems a little bit but um, murder fang and the wolf and dreadnought do not so it means that you're not going to be able to use a stratagem on them which is i mean it's good but it's not that's not going to like kind of stop you from making your decision um, but the lack of keyword of core keyword may hinder your decision a little bit just because uh, again wolf and dreadnought gets edged out and it's now been edged out by these two different options so um, things to kind of keep in mind i mean i again if you love the wolf and dreadnought you want to throw one on the table and if you're getting really good results with it and i'm missing something completely with this as to why it's you know edging out the other two make sure you comment in the video below i would love to know what uh, what you guys think of this model but um now moving on from there we have to talk about the big man bjorn himself bjorn comes in with a movement of six inches weapon skill ballistic skill two plus strength seven toughness eight uh eight wounds attacks of five leadership nine and a three plus save he's a beast toughness eight huge he's also a character so again targeting shenanigans do apply um, now, with his equipment options, uh, he comes stock with True Claw, which is just an absolute beast. Um, this thing is plus five strength. Um, he's strength seven base, so this thing is striking at strength 12. Uh, AP minus four, D6 damage. Each time attack is made with this weapon, you can reroll the wound roll. So it retains that sort of claw ability from all the uh, Space Wolf um, 
claw weapons um, for the dreadnoughts. But in addition to that, it, it, it's just plus five strength, AP minus four, D6 damage. This thing is meant to go up against knights. I've done it. I've seen this thing crush, crush big, scary monsters. Um, I mean, Necron, uh, Const Const Necron Constructs. Uh, I've done it. It's, it's amazing. I love this thing. Um, this guy is just absolutely uh, lives up to his reputation in the lore as well. Now, as far as his other weapons concerned, uh, I generally like to kit mine out with the, um, with the Hellfrost Cannon. That's pretty much purely based on um, the thematic aspect of it, it being a Space Wolf specific weapon. Um, but you can you can obviously switch this out for another weapon like a Laz Cannon or something and really utilize that Ballistic Skill 2 Plus uh, if you feel like doing so. Now he is, I find that most games that I run him, I do almost always want to advance him. Um, just to get him into position, get him up the table, because he's usually traveling with something that's screening him, and that's usually advancing, just because I love to just, you know, get up into the face of the enemy. That's, that's Space Wolves. They want to do that. Um, so for the increased mobility and him only having a six-inch movement, you're probably going to advance this guy quite a bit. So when you're looking at the weapon options, of uh, shooting weapon options, I mean, the cheapest option is probably the best, to be honest. Um, yeah, but, I mean, that's that's my opinion. Now, as far as special rules, he does retain Duty Eternal. Um, pretty strong. He has uh, Legendary Tenacity, which gives him a 5-plus Wound Shrug, so it's plus one better than the uh, Venerable Dreadnoughts. And uh, he gains the Rites of Battle Aura ability. Now... The Rights of Battle War ability, uh, while a friendly Space Wolf core unit is within six inches of this model, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, reroll, hit rolls of one. Yeah, so he's a character, and he's he's basically like one of your Wolf Lords. He is a Wolf Lord running around in a Dreadnought and just smashing stuff. So super strong ability. Um, yeah, you're going to want this guy in the middle of stuff because you want to screen him and he's going to be helping that stuff that he that is helping him. That's great. Symbi symbiotic relationship. Um, now, he does... He is points heavy. Um, so things, things to keep in mind. But, uh, yeah, I mean, really at this point, you're not really too, too concerned with that. Moving on to unit synergies. Um, there are... Are a few options as far as like character synergies with the core keyword uh, that you can kind of work out some uh, chaplain litanies. I'm not going to dwell too much on that, but um, a big one to look at is the dreadnought drop pod um, as a delivery method for these guys and being able to drop them on the table where you need them to go and uh, maybe get that turn one charge, especially if you're working out some auras and shenanigans. But um, yeah, I mean that's that's in my opinion that's the best unit synergy for this thing. Um, moving from on from there, we need to look at stratagems. So as far as base stratagems are concerned, I mean, death to the traitors, one command point, uh, you're getting reroll hits versus uh, uh, Heretic Astartes units. So that's obviously a strong thing to pop on these guys. Um, Bjorn and Murderfang are eligible to use only in death does duty end. It's two command points. Uh, if they haven't ter if haven't swung yet in combat, um, it allows them to swing before you remove the model if they die, which is big, especially with Bjorn. <laughs> if he gets charged and you didn't get a chance to swing yet and he dies, you can kill what attacked him or what charged him. You can you can confidently be like. Okay, you die too. Um, and Murder Fang, a lot of, along the same lines for sure. Um, uh, from there, I mean, the Armor of Contempt, one command point stratagem, definitely something to keep in your back pocket, especially if you're facing something like Thousand Suns or you're worried a lot about a lot of, or Grey Knights, and you're worried about a lot of Mortal Wound spam, uh, stuff that's going to really cut through maybe like your Blizzard Shields and your four plus invulns. Um, yeah, if you're if you're worried about stuff like that, that's going to cut right through you. Uh, pop the stratagem, five plus mortal wound shrug, 
Beautiful. Wisdom of the Ancients. Now this is a one command point stratagem um, and for the rest of the turn you can gain a uh, reroll aura. Now it can't be used on Wolfen so Murderfang is ineligible for this and the rights of battle portion of the two order auras because there's two auras to choose from is irrelevant on Bjorn because he already has um, he already has a six inch reroll one to hit aura now um but you can take the tactical precision aura which is uh reroll wound rolls of one and you can give it to him and he gains both so he's rerolling hit rolls of one and wound rolls of one really strong um and this can be popped on our venerable dreadnought as well so you can have this guy in the middle and be able to give this uh, this little bubble uh and you can choose the reroll hits as well for that uh, for that model there's also the smoke screen stratagem so we talked about this a little earlier if they have the uh, the keyword um so wolfen murder frag ineligible for this but one command point you're going to be able to pop it in the shooting phase when they're targeted and you're going to be able to give them a minus one to hit against enemy shooting, which is really strong. Um, especially on something like the Venerable Dreadnought with Blizzard Shield, who's already super durable. Um, or a T8 Bjorn. I mean, yeah, let's, let's just make it even harder for them to uh, to get through to, uh, to hurt your guys. Um, now we're moving on to the Space Wolf supplement uh, stratagems. Now, options for this, uh, Savage Strike, one command point or two command point. It's technically always going to be one command point because it's two command points for five or more models and you're only ever going to be popping this on one when we're talking dreadnoughts. Um, plus one to wound when charging. Pretty strong. Um, you can see where that starts to get really crazy when you're doing things like um, uh, swinging things like the Fenrisian Axe and uh, able to really chop through stuff. Uh, if you're fighting stuff that maybe you'd be normally wounding on fours, now you're threes, threes, now you're twos. Great. Um, Relentless Assault, one command point. That's a plus three inch consolidate. Huge. Uh, especially when you start using other stratagems that we're about to talk about and you're getting into combat quicker and you're able to, or you're heroic intervening. Uh, when you're choosing to consolidate your models, you're now additionally, you're moving an additional three inches. You can see how this allows you to kind of stay in combat and, and really like bounce around and force your opponent to make some really tough decisions. Um, counter charge is one command point or zero command point for a character. So Bjorn and Murderfang are gonna really love this. And that's uh, the uh, the six inches heroic intervention. So a uh, carry over from the past or previous uh, codex. It's, uh, yeah, now you can pop the stratagem and you can uh, heroically intervene six inches. Again, super strong for moving your guys around the table. And that's really it. Uh, ultimately, kind of, uh, th those are all the stratagems really that I would employ. Uh, now, as far as getting these guys up the tabletop and getting them into combat with your enemy, we did discuss the Dreadnought Drop Pod from Forge World as an option, but if you're running a lot of stuff up the table, um, I actually personally love to throw these guys in the middle of a blob of um, Blood Claws. I just you know what? They're two wounds now a piece, and they're, they are Marines. They're in the three plus armor save, and they're already trying to get up and get into the face of the enemy, anyways. So if you can put a big blob of uh, of these guys kind of surrounding um, your model, and you know pull off models accordingly when they're targeted with shooting, and you're trying to get to the the meat, the center of uh, a center of your blob, um, which is your venerable dreadnought, uh, murder fang, or Bjorn or possibly the Wolf and Dreadnought if you're going that option. Um, yeah, it's just it's it's a good way to get them up the table. Another thing you could look at is you could look at Fenrisian Wolves or something like that, but um, I mean, really, with the Fenrisian Wolves, you are going to have to worry about uh, them getting blown off the table pretty quickly because they are uh, they're just generally a easier unit to target um or to take off the table so a clever opponent's gonna really do some damage to them and then allow them to uh target bjorn or whoever you're trying to protect in the middle uh other screens i mean you can look at um <laughs> really cool idea um i had and i still haven't run it on the table yet but if you have please let me know would be to run um several venerable dreadnoughts with blizzard shields in front of bjorn booking it up the table and just 
um, I mean, using them as their shield uh, or as their uh, as sort of a guardian for him. That's going to be a scary, scary, scary uh, combat squad in uh, getting into your enemy line if they make it up the table. So points heavy, though, so th things to consider when you're list building. And really, the, that's it as far as um, getting these guys up the table and as far as how I like to employ them on the tabletop. Um, I'm a big fan of taking Bjorn and a Venerable Dreadnought with Blizzard Shield and uh, Fenris and Great Axe. Those are the models I own. Um, there's a reason that uh, those are the models that we have for the uh, the Space Wolf collection. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's really it. Uh, quick little uh, side note. If you guys enjoy uh, the models that you've seen spun on the spin today, <laughs> um, those are done by Zach over at Brushfire Studios. He did up the entire Space Wolf collection. And uh, if you have any commission needs, check out his uh, web website on Facebook and there's a link in the video description below. Thanks so much for watching guys and until next time, take care. Sponsored by <laughs>